Hey friends, we've got something exciting going on at my house. We're building a she shed, and by we, I mean all my guys, my husband, my sons, my sons-in-law. Um, once upon a time, around 2002, we built a shed, and that's the way it looked when it was very, very new when we first built it. I drew the plans. I imagined what I wanted it to look like, and Ben just built it. And then after a lot of hard use, a couple of decades of extreme weather and faithful service. Now, my very good BFF <laughs> sent me a picture of her shed that she had, and that was inspiring. And, um, of course, you know, Pinterest had this gorgeous little shed as an inspiration. I love the color scheme. I loved the way this was, the gables are offset on this. And that was interesting to me. And this one showed, I think it's actually a house, but it showed, you know, a tall addition on the right. So I came up, I, I rendered this mock-up just from kind of hacking some Photoshop pieces together to get an idea of what we might do. And then we improved the doors. I actually think I'm going to use the color scheme from the little Pinterest image. I'm going to repaint. It hasn't been painted since 1999 or whenever, 2002. That's, that's terrible. Okay, so from the side, the original shed is 10 feet front to back, and the new part would be 22 feet front to back, and we'll just center it. Well, we're by the time we decided we were really going to do it, it was dark, and we went outside in the dark and took flagging tape so that we could see exactly where it was going to, you know, where it was going to sit. And, um, wow, <laughs> there's, there's a canoe, there's a, a chain link fence that the, uh, a tree has fallen on it. It's already partially down and, uh, it's going to have to be removed, but you can see it gives us an idea of a, just exactly where it would sit and we decided yes this is a good idea let's go for it let's do it I can't tell if that's Sam or Joel but both of them were out there that night you know how when you first get an idea how exciting it is well the next morning came and I had to go out there and take pictures of the shed so that I could do my little Photoshop mock-up uh, that's the side where the dog fence, it's an old dog fence, and a tree landed on it. Oh, it's terrible. And bless it, look at those beautiful doors. That was, that was actually uh, pressure treated wood. I'm not sure how that got so rotten. And you can see that the vines tried to take it over. But all that is going to get freshened up. It's going to get scraped off and a new, that's the back view a new coat of paint and I'm real excited about that. I think that'll be a fun project to do. There is a doghouse inside that dog pen. Still still an okay doghouse. We just have to move it out of the way. And turns out we did need to remove a little cedar tree that was inside the footprint of the new addition. And after we got all the footers poured we realized that the sweet gum tree and one of the pines had um, some dangerous looking features, including a, a hole that was hollowed out. And we had a tree service come and bring those two big, huge trees down. That just happened today. All right, so there's my son, Sam. And uh, at this point, the chain link has been removed and Ben Cain does not build anything, just sort of. He put those posts for the chain link fence. He poured so much cement that it took a lot of effort to get those posts up. But they got them up. And here's Ben going over the area with his tractor, his Toro. And we kind of made an event of it. Um, there's, there's a couple of son-in-laws and couple of sons and of course grandchildren there's Margaret Ann little doll she couldn't miss a thing she had to be out there in the middle of everything 
Um, and like I said, Ben can't build anything just sort of. So the, the four corners and the middle of each side and the center, very center of the building, all had to have concrete footers. Oh, this little this little helper got tired and she had to come in the house for a little time out. That's how I felt, Claire. That's right there. That's exactly how I felt about it. So they worked into the night. They had a work light out there and they mixed and poured concrete. A um, hundred bags worth of concrete, of quick set concrete. What in the world? But because they do it themselves, you know, that saves a lot of money. I mean, they're going to build this whole shed themselves. And I appreciate it. And it's, it's a good thing. Oh, there's my oldest son, Sam, and uh, Margaret adores him. <laughs> they love their big old bear, Uncle Sam, with his big old Grizzly Adams beard. He looks like a big old gruff thing, but he's a teddy bear. Okay, so, you know, uh, mixing. Look, can you see how much concrete is in the back of the truck? That wasn't even all the concrete that had to be purchased. Oh, my word. We did build a little fire out there, and that's my house in the background. <laughs> Margaret, she cracks me up. She thinks she knows everything. She does know probably almost everything. Okay, so the next day, we've got some of the footings already in place, already hardened, and a few more to go. Well, like I said, he, he wants to make sure that under the floor is going to be, you know, really good and sturdy. Someone asked, why didn't you just pour a whole concrete pad? Well, you know, we're not millionaires. And that would have been very expensive. And we're trying to do this on a budget. So, um, the second night of concrete pouring, it was just me and Ben. Ryan was here for a while. And Joel came out and helped. And, of course, my dog. And... You know this is just kind of family time and it's always been this way when we do a project we kind of just do it all together <laughs> Joel had been doing a ton of homework my sons are still in college so he came out for a break from calculus or something and then uh, this carried on to the next day I think this might have been Monday it was a long President's Day weekend Monday was President's Day, so Ben was able to stay home from work. And there's my little fire again. You know, just enough to play with because um, I'm a camping girl. I grew up, oh my word, so many bags, bags and bags and bags of concrete. And there it is with all the footers ready. Now, you know, this is the, the most boring part of the entire build is this part. Clearing it off, getting it ready to put the floor. We will attach it to the little building. And where that single window is there on the side, we'll turn that into a doorway. Now, you may be wondering what brought us to the place of deciding to build a she shed. Well, besides the fact that my house is bursting at the seams, um, we've got a very exciting reason to be doing this. Now this is November of 2020 when my little daughter, my youngest daughter Olivia, this is her wedding day and we just love Ryan. She picked out such a good one. Um, they recently announced and cel or, or we are all celebrating the arrival, soon to be arriving, Isaac, little boy. And this is wonderful. This is exciting news. We're so happy. Well, it just so happens that Olivia and Ryan have decided to make some changes and to do some things to situate themselves from renters to homeowners. And you know, that's not an easy transition and there's never really a perfect time to do it. But guess what? Um, Isaac Cade gets to be a newborn baby at my house. And I'm so excited. Look at him with his legs stretched out and his ankles crossed. I think that's the most adorable ultrasound picture I've ever seen. So for this to happen, I'm clearing out two of my five bedrooms. 
and hence <laughs> the building of the she shed. Now what you're going to see here is the um, the tree trimmers, the tree service guys came today. Uh, we noticed that a sweet gum tree had a huge hole in it and it was dying. And one of these huge trees, we've got like, you know, 75 foot pines in our yard. And another one very close to the shed looked like lightning had struck it and it was dying. And, you know, we can't, we can't have that. So we called them out and they did an excellent job. Now we'll have a ton of firewood to cut up. Uh, they could have taken it away from us, but, you know, for us, I mean, for a price. <laughs> but we like to burn fires in our fire pits and all that when we go camping. So um, we're just going to take care of that ourselves. And by we, I mean all the men. Um, I'll probably help a little. So that's why we're building the She Shed, is to make room for Livy and Ryan and new baby Isaac to be here as they transition from renters to homeowners and we're ever so happy that they're going to be here with us and you know my house is big but um i you know i had to have somewhere to put things so here's some of the sketches that i have drawn just on paper with my pencil not even anything fancy and when you see on these sketches things like olivia's table and chairs uh, well, that's because, you know, Olivia's things had to go somewhere as well. And I am going to clear out, I mean, if you want to pause that and get really zoomed in, you can see some of the things that are going to be living out there temporarily. And that's that's understandable. That's, that's just part of what's got to happen. So we're going to um, empty out my Rose room and my Grandma Moses room. But the she shed will be a great place for all those things. And like I said, this is temporary. We're also going to, uh, and it just, wow, the downstairs playroom is a huge room. It's just sorely in need of a refreshing. On the plans, you can see that along that right hand wall, I had blocked out some space for shelves because this is a big deal. I've always dreamed of having shelves to put things so we're gonna have a big wall of shelves that I can put my things and temporarily Olivia will have some of her things on these shelves as well but um, hopefully 14 feet wide 10 feet tall and two feet deep and that's pretty exciting um, we also hope to put a loft on the far end <laughs> and that will be a good bit of additional space and you know I'm not sure how much more space Olivia is going to need for her things but a lot of her furniture actually will be used in my house especially the playroom furniture um, she's got some really gorgeous uh, leather living room furniture that we're going to use in the playroom downstairs to give us all more elbow room and living space so we won't feel like we're all just right on top of each other but um that's a lot of content coming up for all of you to see and I'm excited to share it with you and uh, just pray for my strength and my health to hold up during the process and I am excited to know that all of you will be following along and giving us good suggestions.